From doubled up vertices to tricky loop cuts and vanishing objects, we'll guide you through each solution step by step, ensuring your projects stay smooth and stress free. Let's jump in and take your Blender skills to the next level. In this video, we're tackling the everyday challenges Blender students face, delivering clear, actionable fixes to empower your creative journey. Here we go. Interested in learning Blender? Preview my Udemy courses in the description below and get ahead of the curve fast. No matter what interests you, you'll find your perfect match. To follow along, find the link to the files in the description below. One pervasive issue when modeling in Blender is the presence of doubled up vertices. Such redundancies can cause a variety of problems, including shading, texturing, or rendering artifacts, and can also adversely affect vertex weight painting, among other things. Let's consider an example where you're trying to inset a face by initially choosing to extrude it. Press E for extrusion. If you change your mind and decide to use the inset tool instead, you might instinctively right click to cancel. However, this action doesn't cancel the initial extrusion command. The extrusion has occurred and to confirm, press G. You might find an additional face occupying the same space as your original selected face. One way to help ascertain the number of vertices you're working with, activate statistics option in the overlays menu. It will show you the count of vertices. If you select all, a standard cube, for instance, should display eight vertices. Here, however, it shows 12, indicating the overlap. You won't always know the number of vertices, so it's always helpful to regularly press M and choose Merge by Distance. This action will remove vertices that occupy the same location, effectively eliminating any extra vertices. Yet another scenario where faces may overlap occurs when you attempt to divide a face in two. Switch to Vertex Selection and select two vertices. If you press F at this point, thinking it will do the job, you're actually just creating an extra edge. To visually isolate this, select the adjacent face and press H to hide it. This reveals the extra edge. We can select the edge and press X to delete. To make the face visible again, press Alt plus H. To correctly split the face in two, switch to Vertex Selection Mode. Select two vertices and then press J to join. This will divide the face approximately without adding extra unwanted geometry. The next common problem that arises in Blender is with loop cuts not functioning as expected. Loop cuts are a valuable tool for adding extra edges to your mesh, serving to increase detail or maybe exert greater control over the subdivision surface modifier. You may encounter instances where pressing Ctrl plus R to activate the loop cut tool does not yield the expected results. Specifically, you may find that only a single vertex appears as an option, which you can observe at the top of the edge. If I move my cursor down the mesh here, you'll see a preview of an edge, but the loop cut still won't fully connect from top to bottom or wrap around the mesh as intended. The culprit behind this behavior is often an end gone in your mesh. To clarify, if you right click momentarily to cancel, you'll notice that all the lower faces where the edge preview appeared are four sided polygons or quads. However, the face at the top of the mesh here has more than four edges, making it an end gone. Loop cuts are programmed to avoid end gons. They simply don't know how to handle them, so they refuse to create a cut through these problematic polygons. This serves as yet another reason to steer clear of using end gons in your mesh. If you find it absolutely necessary to create an edge loop through an area with an end gon, you do have an alternative method. The knife tool. Activate the knife tool by pressing the K key, then select your starting point at the top of the mesh. Navigate to the bottom of your mesh and click and establish the second point for the cut. Confirm the action by pressing enter. This way you can add an edge loop to a mesh containing an end gone, just not through the regular loop cut command. Occasionally while modeling, you may experience the sudden disappearance of your work after pressing the one key. This can be particularly confusing if you're accustomed to using the keys one, two and three for selecting vertices, edges and faces. However, it's crucial to remember that these numeric keys function differently depending on your current mode in Blender. In edit mode, pressing one, two or three 
allows you to select vertices, edges or faces, as you're probably familiar with. However, when you're in object mode, these same keys actually serve to toggle different collections on and off. For example, if you press 4, all collections except for the fourth one will be hidden from view. Similarly, pressing 5 will hide all collections other than the fifth one. If you find yourself in a situation where multiple collections have been hidden and you want to make them all visible again, there's a straightforward solution. Simply press and hold the control key while clicking on the eye icon in the outliner. This action will unhide all your collections, restoring visibility to your viewport. On occasion, you might find yourself pressing the M key and merging all vertices to the center, leaving you with a lone vertex. While this may seem straightforward, it presents some challenges in Blender's interface. For instance, if you switch to edge selection mode, this solitary vertex becomes invisible. The reason for this is simple. In edge mode, you need a pair of connected vertices to form a visible edge. Similarly, in face selection mode, you'll also notice that nothing is displayed because a face requires at least three connected vertices. Attempting to extrude this single vertex while in edge or face mode won't yield the result you're aiming for. It will merely move the existing vertex. To properly extrude, you'll need to switch back to vertex selection mode. Once there, pressing the E key will allow you to extrude the vertex, thereby forming an edge. However, be cautious. When you're in face selection mode and you try to extrude by pressing E, doing so won't create a new face it will only move the edge you've formed. If your goal is to create a face, you must either be in vertex or edge selection mode. For instance, while in edge selection mode, pressing E will extrude the edge, creating a new face in the process. Now, when you switch to face selection mode, you'll find that the new face can indeed be selected and extruded. When working with multiple objects in a Blender scene, the need to zoom in closely for detailed work can arise. For instance, zooming into the first monkey head object may present no difficulties. Similarly, zooming into the second monkey head could also be straightforward. However, when you attempt to zoom into the last one here, you might notice that your zooming capabilities are suddenly more restricted. The reason for this limited zoom range can be attributed to the view mode you're currently in, typically user perspective. One way to circumvent this restriction is to switch your view mode to orthographic. Unlike the perspective mode, orthographic view removes the limitation on how closely you can zoom into an object. To switch to orthographic view, use the relevant controls in your Blender interface. Once you're in this mode, you'll find that you can zoom in extremely close to your object without any hindrance. Alternatively, if you prefer to work in user perspective mode but still want a workaround for the restricted zoom, you can engage the fly mode. To enter fly mode, press shift along with the tilde key. In this mode, you can use the W, A, S and D keys to navigate around your scene freely. Once you're at a desirable viewpoint, simply left click your mouse to exit fly mode and lock in that position. This provides another effective method for circumventing zoom limitations in Blender. When working on a Blender scene, you may inadvertently press the spacebar, causing unexpected movements or disappearances of objects within your scene. To understand why this is happening, let's consider an example. Say you select an object and move it to a new location, then advance the timeline to frame 100. Now move the object again. In each of these instances, Blender automatically adds keyframes that record the object's transformations, such as position changes. The root cause of this automated behavior is the auto keying feature, which is usually toggled on via this button. When enabled, this feature automatically adds keyframes to the timeline for any changes you make to an object's properties, like position, rotation, and scale, essentially any attribute that can be keyframed. Although the auto keying feature is invaluable when animating, it can become an annoyance if it's turned on unintentionally, especially if you're not aware of its capabilities or forget it's activated. Therefore, if you notice objects moving or changing in unexplained ways, it would be prudent to check the status of the auto keying button to see if it's enabled and toggle it off if necessary. 